Hey YouTube and welcome back to another video, thanks for joining me. So in today's video we're going to be looking at my Cuban night and old Castro and just giving an update on his enclosure, just seeing how he's doing and do a little bit of maintenance. So if there's something that interests you then please stay tuned. Without further ado, let's crack on with today's video. Hey YouTube and welcome back. So like I said in today's video we're going to take a look at uh, Castro and see how he's getting on. He's grown quite a bit, even though I say he, I do think it's a she. But we're going to have a little bit of a tidy up of the tank today. We're going to do a little bit of planting and a little bit of maintenance as well. And just have an overall look at how he's getting on. So let's dive straight into the video. Okay, so I think the last videos we've shown was actually Castro being introduced into his enclosure. So since she or he has probably almost tripled in size, She's doing really well at the moment, um, she's eating, and she's currently actually in shed. The enclosure itself has done pretty well to be fair, most of the plants are growing in nicely. Um, the only ones that didn't really succeed were the Boston ferns in the bottom corners of uh, both sides. So I had to remove them and we're going to do a little bit of planting today and we'll look to try and replace them. I'm going to do a little bit of tidying up, the glass needs clean as you can see, he's left me a lovely present dripping down the one side of the glass. We are going to clean some of the leaves of the plants because I do find that when he does go to the toilet on the plants, the springtails and the wood lice don't actually really take care of them. So we'll have a little look at that, do a little bit of tidying up and I've got a couple of plants we're going to add. So let's crack on and we'll make a start on cleaning the glass. Okay, so as you can see from time to time, he does make a bit of a mess on some of his plants and the springtails, like I said, don't seem to get these. So we're going to give this a bit of a clean now and tidy some of the plants up before we start on the new planting. Okay, so I think the plants are looking a bit better now and they're a little bit cleaner. It doesn't really matter if any of the droppings have fallen into the tank, springtails take care of those. But I think now we'll take a look at what plants we're going to be using and see how we're going to put them in there. Okay, so here's the plants we're going to use today. So we've got some fireball bromeliads at the back here. Um, we've also got a bromeliad here. We're going to use some pothos there um, for some of the ground cover. Um, we've also got some calcia as well, which I've never used before, but it is an edible plant and see how that gets on. So we're going to try these in the corners and we're going to scatter the bromeliads as many as we can around the higher end of the terrarium. So we'll go ahead and start planting now and see how we go on. Okay, so we're just going to put one of the fireballs up in the, behind the wood there. As you can see, I've exposed the roots and the stem as well. So we're just going to put some moss around that just so it doesn't dry out once it's planted. And try and wrap around as best we can. And then try and wedge him in there. And there you go. And we'll just try and put another one down here as well. And 
and group them together nicely like that. Okay, we'll try and do something similar now with this one. And I might just need a little bit more moss. should be good and just try and do the final one okay so we'll try and do the final one now as I was removing this one from its part you might be able to see is if I can focus the little puff here where it should grow another shoot very soon And we're good to go. Okay, as you can see, this is the corner where we have one of the um, Boston ferns. So that didn't work out very well. Okay, so I'm just going to dig out a little space now and we'll plant the pothos in there and we'll see if we can put the calcium in front of it as well. Okay, we'll just try and make a little bit of space for the calcium, like I said as well, in front of it. Pack that pothos back in. Now, I've never used this plant in a terrarium before, so we'll see how it gets on. Now it doesn't look great right now, but hopefully it will start to come back now with a bit of light and a bit of water. Okay, now finally we're going to add the last bromeliad now back into this little cork tube which you can see down here. And that's pretty much the planting for today. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed um, seeing how I look after that tank. Obviously it wasn't a massive amount of work and I just wanted to do a little bit of, pl bit of planting where some of the plants hadn't worked out in the past. So if you hadn't seen my last video, um, obviously I went through how I keep up with all the maintenance on all the tanks in this room and what my daily routine is. If you want to see a little bit more, then I definitely recommend going back and checking out that video. And I'll pop a link in the description down below as well so you can go and check that out. So this tank's probably been set up now for about five months. It was probably my last video that I put up before I took a break. 
and Castro is the newest addition to the room. Obviously, I call it Castro, but I do think it's probably a female, um, just judging by the size of the head. It's got quite a narrow, pointed head, whereas the males tend to be a bit bigger. Um, so it probably is a female, but it's probably a little bit young to tell yet. But if you know a little bit more than I do, then please don't be afraid to put a comment in the section below. Um, but really happy with how the tank's gone so far. I was disappointed the Boston ferns haven't worked out, but even when I had Bert in this tank, I used to struggle to get ferns to work out in general anyway. They are probably one of my favorite plants, but it's probably a little bit warm, probably a little bit bright for some species as well. Um, but obviously we filled some of those gaps now and we've made use of the bromeliads I had hanging around as well. So we'll keep an eye on how they are doing and I'll make sure I update you on how those are. But as you can see, Castro's grown quite a lot. When I first had her, she was able to sit on a potos leaf, which she have no chance of doing that at the moment. I've tried to work with her a little bit to try and calm it down. Um, she is captive bred, she isn't from the wild, but she's still quite skittish. She isn't exactly fully trusting in me yet. Um, I do sit, spend time with her and try and feed her from tongs, but she doesn't seem to have any bit at the moment. <clears throat> like with a lot of species, I will try and keep up with working with her and try and calm her down a little bit. It would be nice eventually to handle her. It would be difficult to try and calm her down as she gets bigger because they do go quite large and they can give you quite a nasty bite as well. Um, but at the moment she's eating well, as you can see from this video she has shared in. I'll try and get some footage as well and put in this video of her when she has fully shed. So you can see how she looks like because she does get some beautiful colours on her when she's out and about. Um, but at the moment she's primarily in crickets which I dust probably every other feed in. And I feed her between once, and, once a day and once every other day. Um, and she also gets fruits as well, which tends to really like strawberries and that's tested with calcium as well. Um, I'm going to try her with some other fruit eventually, with some blueberries or some raspberries, that sort of thing. She does seem to really enjoy fruit. But the tank at the moment is sitting on the floor, as you can see. I do have a stand for this tank, um, but when I did take it apart from when I moved house and we moved into this room, I haven't set it back up. Um, it probably needs strengthening a little bit because that tank does weigh quite a bit. And I'm going to get another bottom for the tank and actually use it as a base for the stand. So it will eventually be a bit higher up and it will look probably a little bit better in this room as you walk through the door. So I'll make sure I do a video on that as soon as I can, um, but that's probably going to be in the new year now. As well as behind me, I probably I am going to make some racks for some of the tanks I've got hanging around. I've got a 40 gallon on the top of Castro's tank that I'm going to be using for the angelfish. And there's a 50 gallon down here by my feet as well, which needs housing. Um, and I've got something special planned for that but I'll let you know more about that as and when I get around to it. But most of the plants from when we initially set this tank up are doing really well. There's a lot of pothos in there, some bromeliads in there, but primarily I just want to try and get the tank grown out and provide a little bit more cover. Um, the heating and the lighting hasn't changed at all, um, and that's taken along nicely on its own. Um, I tend to spray the tank down about three times manually a day, and that seems to be keeping up with the amount of water that she needs, and obviously she's shedding really well and growing, as I said. Being the first time I've owned a Cuban Night and all, I've really, really enjoyed having her. She's something quite different and something you don't see every day, but I, I've enjoyed working with her and she hopefully will calm down at some point. But I hope you enjoyed this brief update on that enclosure and obviously Castro, the Cuban Night and all. I will be doing future updates on the rest of the tanks in this room, so I know I've been away for quite some time and I'd like you all to catch up on what's been going on. If it's something you particularly want to see, then make sure you comment in the section below. I'll be sure to make sure I prioritize that video. Like I said in, in the last couple of videos, I'm gonna be making another aquascape for a nano tank, which is gonna go on the racking system behind me. And hopefully that will be in the next couple of videos. I've also got another tank waiting to be done after that. I'm hoping in the new year I can look at making some shelving units and we can t make some videos around that as well so you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully we can look at some bigger and better setups as well. I've pretty much moved everything around into the way I've wanted it and to accommodate the new enclosures and new tanks. So I'm hoping it's not going to move around much more. Um, obviously it's quite stressful on some of the animals, especially the fish. And obviously it's quite hard work moving all the tanks around, especially when you're emptying and filling them full of water with buckets. So hopefully not too much change in that respect. I hope you agree. There's a lot of exciting things to come and I hope that you would like to experience that with me. So if you don't want to miss any of those updates on future videos and new setups, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you enjoy what I do, then it really, really helps me out if you share, like, comment on this video. So please, please do. But I think that's enough from me waffling on for today and that's from Castro and we'll see you next time.